Today I'm going to show you guys how to install the knock sensor relocation kit from ICT. Uh, you can also get it a little cheaper elsewhere and I'll put some links on where to get this stuff. There are two decent YouTube videos uh, on how to do this, but they are way long and drawn out. So we're going to make this quick, show you how to throw these things on there in no time and uh, without all the extra video fluff. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, install your knock sensors on the uh, adapters right here. So there are a couple different knock sensors that I recommend. I'll put them down below, and uh, this is how I like to put them in. So this is the rear um, threading, and this is going to put it towards the back of the engine, um, where they're going to be installed like this pretty much. Um, so what that's going to do is going to keep these things away from road grime and debris as much as possible. And uh, this works on two and four wheel drive. Uh, it's going to be super easy if you have a two-wheel drive. The whole job should not take you more than 15 minutes. So here's the hardware that you're provided with. What we're going to do, since we're installing these sensors first, is we're going to put them in a vise, and we're going to torque these things down to 15 foot-pounds, which is the equivalent to 180 inch-pounds. So that's very important. We want to torque this before we install the blocks on the engine. Okay, I've got both of my adapter blocks here in the vise together. I'm using an inch pounds torque wrench up to 180 because that is, uh, I think, more accurate than my foot pounds torque wrench would measure 15. So now they're both torqued, let's go ahead and throw these suckers on. So the camera's going to get shaky here, but uh, the reason for that is I want you guys to see the process of getting down here and what we're going to be looking at. So don't want you to get confused if you just see the bottom of the engine. So we're over here on the driver's side first. Let's get on down here. Okay, so we're looking at the wheel at this angle. We're gonna turn up. Look at the engine block right there. So right there on the left, um, let me point that out. That is the bolt hole and the pad that we're gonna use to install the driver's side adapter. So depending on uh, if your engine is uh, nasty or not, you may want to tap that hole with a tap. Um, before you go installing this. So this is how it's gonna go. See that shelf there on the back where my middle finger is moving? That's gonna go up in this section, and then the bossed portion is what the bolt's gonna go through. So you're just gonna have, uh, have it sitting just like this, and then you're gonna bolt that sucker down. So use the hardware that's provided. You can only, there's only one bolt style, the smaller one that will go in here. Okay, I'm ha having to tap the hole because uh, my hole is dirty, just like your hole may be dirty. So this is a M8 by 1.25. Okay, once you ream out your hole, make sure you blow out your hole. You always wanna blow your hole when you ream it. So let's get this uh, hardware started. I will video and do it one-handed just so I can show you guys how easy it is. Now, if you have a four-wheel drive, obviously there's gonna be some finagling you gotta do. You can uh, either wiggle around the uh, front diff or you can drop the front diff. It's not too big of a deal. Yeah, it's not fun, but guess what? You probably need diff mounts anyway, so dropping the diff isn't too big of a deal. Once that's uh, pretty squared away, we'll just give it some good old uh, ugga duggas here. I'm just using a quarter inch ratchet and uh, 10 mil. Okay, so that sucker's nice and tight and this one's ready to go. Let's do the passenger side and then we'll do the wiring. Okay, so just like I did on the other side, let's kind of give some perspective. So here I'm laying kind of side to side with my head towards the passenger side of the vehicle. And uh, there is where we're going to mount our adapter. So this one is going to sit um, underneath on the bottom. And this boss right here sticking up is going to go in that hole. So luckily on this, we don't have to worry about uh, chasing any threads or anything like that because the threads are actually in the adapter itself. So... It's going to sit up in here just like this, nice and secure, and then that bolt is going to go in from the top. So this one, I don't think I can video two-handed, or sorry, uh, one-handed, however you want to say it, because I'm going to have to hold this block in place and drop the bolt in from the top. So to show you that again, we'll drop this out and pull it this way. See that boss goes up in that hole, and then you're going to drop the uh, other piece of hardware like this straight in from the top. And it's going to thread into our adapter just like that. Okay, so this part takes some finagling. I wanted to show you the position that I have my hand in to tighten this top bolt. So I have my pointer finger on the left side of the bolt, 
and I'm wrapping my thumb around the other side and I'm twisting it like this, okay? So it may not make sense now, but when you get up here and you are finagling yourself, then uh, you'll understand. So here's the motor mount. This finger is going between the motor mount forward to touch the bolt. And I'm wrapping the thumb around right here. So I know this may not seem very helpful in the moment, but uh, that bolt is up there and it's gonna be hard to get to. So this is the only part that'll definitely take some patience. And um, I think I'm gonna tighten it with this right here. So let me give that a shot and I'll let you guys know if it works. Okay, so when you're doing your final torque, what's gonna work best, at least what works for me and my body type and my physical ability is to tighten this thing up with a quarter inch flex head ratchet and a shallow 13. So I'm just uh, tightening it a little bit at a time right here. And this just happens to clear everything just like I need it to. You're gonna want a micro click ratchet too. So the old, you know, good old craftsman, 30 year old uh, quarter inch ratchet probably is not gonna do it. Uh, or you may get lucky and it might, but that's how you're gonna be tightening this right here. So shallow 13 on a flex head quarter inch. Next up, we're gonna do our wiring. So you can go either way on the adapters. You can go with the off brand like I did or you can go straight ICT. But for the electrical connector, I think you should go ICT. It is not very expensive and uh, the quality of their stuff is really top notch. So uh, first thing we gotta do is disconnect our electrical connector, which normally would be this one back here. Okay, and it would be attached right there going underneath the intake manifold. I've already bypassed mine before. Um, even though my sensors were brand new, they were an AC Delco batch that was deemed uh, bad from AC Delco and had like a recall, but I wasn't about to pull the intake again. So the first method that you, that you can do is uh, twisting these wires together so they both read one sensor and threading a sensor into the head right here. So I'm gonna be doing some tuning on this engine. So we wanna at least have two knock sensors and have them in better positions. That is not a good setup for tuning and not a long-term solution. So. Let's get our ICT wiring harness plugged in and then we can route our wire. So the important part is going to be routing each side um, away from exhaust manifolds and any source of heat. We should have plenty of loom to drape down uh, both sides and get them connected. As far as routing the wires, it's totally up to you. You just want to stick away from hot stuff and wiggly stuff like uh, the serpentine belt and the pulleys. So. Um, important note, actually, I guess, I don't know how important it really is, but dark blue is going to be driver side bank one, light blue is going to be passenger side bank two. If you mix these up, it really doesn't matter. Um, it, if it throws a code, then, uh, you may not know which sensor it is if you didn't pay attention to, to this. So, okay, we're here on the passenger side. I did not route this where I initially thought I would. Here you can see the manifold and then way up there is the transmission dipstick tube. So we're gonna route this here around the back side. Pull it forward like this, and there's our sensor up there. So that's where I'm gonna end up routing this one. So I'm pulling it this way, and there it is. So the uh, ICT brand wiring harness has good insulation on it, but you still wanna make sure you are as far away from Bernie stuff as you can be and if you're worried about being too close to uh, something like the exhaust manifolds or if you're running headers you can actually extend this and i think they maybe even sell a longer harness this is the 36 inch harness so that's where i have the passenger side driver side there's the oil filter i ended up dropping this one down the back of the bell housing just like i did on the passenger side so just make sure you uh drop it down back here uh, not up there, because you don't want to get close to the manifolds. Then we can plug that one in too. All right, now you can go to town with zip ties and things if you so desire. Depending on how you routed your wires, you may want to zip, zip tie some things uh, out of the way. Or if you're happy with everything, then you can just leave it. So I just routed my driver's side one behind this bolt right there, and that shouldn't be going anywhere. Passenger side, you can see right here. Um, there is the connector and then our wiring just runs up here 
by the starter far enough away from that pipe and uh, let me see if I could zoom in for you guys hopefully you can see that is the dipstick tube and the wire is going around that so um, I'm not gonna say everybody's case will be different but you have options you know you, you can, you can kind of choose what you want to do okay so that's gonna wrap it up for knock sensor relocation on your gen 3 LS it's gonna be the same for pretty much every gen 3 right and uh, I'm just gonna leave this harness right here in case I uh, ever get into trouble and for some reason want to use it now I will tell you some hints on sensors you want to go with NTK Delphi or Delphi or Duralast and uh, I know some people might balk at Duralast but those are actually one of the best rated sensors for these trucks believe it or not Delphi is gonna be the top of the line and NTK is good also I've only ever had one that was out of range AC Delco Man, I have had so many problems with those. I would just totally avoid them. Supposedly, there's an AC Delco mark that has a purple or green piece of, or a bit of paint on it, and those are supposed to be the superseded numbers, the new ones. But I just, I, I don't know. Delphi is fine. Duralast has a lifetime warranty, and uh, they're going to be just fine. And now they're easy to get to, so I can change them a whole lot easier. But that's going to wrap it up. I will put links to all the parts in the description. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.